Hey folks, so we'll get cracking with the painting of uh, this this gateway now, and and as I, as I always do, I've done a little colour swatch uh, to, as a guide for how I'm going to sort of what mood I'm going to try and create with the painting. Um, so that that's a nice little doodle there that that I'm going to work from, and hopefully get that sort of feeling uh, at the end of it. Um, um, the first stage with, with something like this would be to put on uh, the the, the colour wash um, to, to cover the painting really and and that's going to need you to use a big brush really so something like this um, or, your, or your squirrel brush something big enough to, to cover this this size of area because we're going to cover it hot cover it all and uh, you don't want to be using a small brush and making loads and loads of little marks with your brush uh, and the first bit so we want a nice graded wash so if I damp so with clean water I'm just dipping into the water and, and just letting that flood down just to to help the the colour float on on the paper really so working top to bottom it doesn't have to be perfect if you miss a bit it's fine I'm sure you'll catch it up with your paint so I've got the board on a slight tilt so it's a I don't know about 30 degrees something like that just so that the paint can run run down as, as you apply it I suppose as well I don't know you could probably use one of these brushes a uh, that would be really useful for covering big areas. Um, I'm not going to use that because I don't think everyone's got one and uh, I just want to make it accessible for you to do. So something like this or something similar to this is is what I'm going to use. Um, um, so starting at the top I've made up a puddle of Payne's Grey with a bit of cobalt in it. Cobalt blue. And if I just whack that on Just wipe that on like that. And then I'm going to grab the cobalt blue itself. So working underneath. Just letting that float down. You've got loads of time to work when you're doing this because um, your paper's wet. So it just gives you the... Just going a bit darker there, so that needs to be more concentrated at least than the paint that's already on, just to give you or to prevent a cauliflower. Tilting the board like that, can you say that's running down? That's useful. So I'm going to change the brush now and I'm going to add a warm colour to that. So we've got burnt sienna, just going to whack that on. And some raw sienna there. So again, you got the stripes at the beginning, but as you work, the the water will allow it to to blend together. So that's raw sienna there, real golden glow to this paint in there. And then I'm going to start moving back to, towards the blue. Just take that out with a dry brush. And I think as well at the bottom, I'm going to put a little bit of crimson just to really, really make it interesting. And 
multicoloured. So we've got a little runnel there going down so I can just change the angle of the board and just allow the paint to mix together in this this wash even you know can you see I don't know if you can see there it's just the colours are mixing together that's a lovely wash that And then what I could do to allow that to drive, I don't want any sort of more movement. I would I would lay it flat and allow it to dry so the colours are not sort of guided with, with gravity then. So I'm going to let that dry and then we'll carry on with the rest of the painting. So the next bit, we'd start looking at the things that are furthest away in the painting. So the distant hills or mountains in the background there so I'd look at start looking at that and I've, I've made a big puddle uh, with the, the cobalt blue and a bit of Payne's grey and a touch of crimson in it um, and just just sort of very economical strokes just try and get these hills on in the background there just and allowing so the colour's not so dark that it, it it's still transparent, it still shows the colour underneath. And what I've done there, I've just grabbed some some crimson there to, to, to imagine that warmth is coming across that, that mountain there. That's really wet. I'm going to paint through the, the drawing of, of the gear, just so we're not being too fussy with our painting today. set really really economical strokes like that and there's a lot of water on that now so I just soak it up with a with a dry brush put some crimson in there just take up that excess water there That's good. And then we've got a bit of land there that, that's even closer to us. So if I grab some some cobalt again and some of the paint's grey, make it a bit darker. And then I'm just going to let it touch that. That wash in the background there and again some warmth into that so some crimson So it's really wet there and I'm just allowing the brush to to create some shapes and imagine that the, there's a few trees and I think there's a few buildings around that area there. So just sort of brush strokes that sort of capture that surfaces and a bit of light going on it. Just going to squeeze out a bit more blue, using quite a lot of this today. I know, I think it's about timing really, so that I can try and get this separate from the landscape in the background, and but with still a little bit of blurring and, and softer edges there. That's doing all right, that. I 
and then into this part so there's a little bit of progression and depth to this part of, of the landscape and I'm painting around the the structure there I'm gonna just chase that up in a minute so with a dry brush just getting rid of these puddles to uh, prevent too many cauliflowers anyway I'm not too bothered if we get a few so I'll just take off some colour like that and that when we come to paint that bit it'll just allow to show that there's light on the surfaces as well that's good A bit darker. I'll come back to that because I think what will happen, depending on how strong this is and, and the reflection, etc., will govern what we need to do. They do we need to do a little bit more to give that depth? Um, that's that's looking all right so far. So moving on to the gate itself now, I'm going to change brush using something a little bit smaller and a little bit, um, still a round brush, but it's, I can get a point with this. So we're, st we're still applying the paint as a wash, but obviously now we're working in a, a smaller area and we're going to be a little bit more careful, but you, you still want to think about it as if you're applying a, a translucent wash. So... So I'm trying to keep fluid movements. Just like put a bit more water into that. So I'm just gonna do the rooftop bit first and then I'm gonna change colour to more of a burnt sienna mix and see if we can get A little bit of uh, the colours mixing together. So that's just burnt sienna and I'm just allowing it to touch the colour that I've just put on. Again the gravity is just allowing or sort of pulling the colour down so I've gone back to the darker colour there because that's a slightly different thing and again so we've we spent a lot of time doing our drawing really well and I suppose now you've got to just steal yourself a little bit and just think right let's go for it let's uh, let's try and think about brush strokes And although it, we are filling it in, try and be a little bit loose with it and allow the brush to just find its way. And if it's not perfectly within your pencil marks, it's not the biggest, it's not a crime. If it gives the feeling of what you're, what you're after, that's, that's okay. So they are quite chunky these these this structure quite again I've gone at the bottom there's quite a big sort of chunky foot to this this pillar. So the same thing there, see if you can capture it with a single brush stroke. Put some blue in at the bottom. Yeah, 
Just gonna just sort of put some more burnt sienna into that. That's good. So just looking back where I've been, we've got a few little collections of water there, little so just soak it up with your brush and it just bit of housekeeping keeps the thing clean. I think as well if you've captured it try and leave it alone <laughs> which is just trying to get that foot right and then I'm going to leave that that's good that's a nice effect that um, I think I might need an even smaller brush for these other struts so um, they're quite dark at the top they've got a little little capping piece so I'll just whack that on Again, whoops, I'll get that later. Let's get those on and then we can bit wobbly. That'll do, it's alright that. You see what I mean? It's it's not cut, followed the drawing exactly, but it's captured it. That it's I'm quite quite okay with that. However, that's gone. A bit more careful there, so you can see you can see it in the brush stroke. A bit more tentative. A bit more confident with that one. You need a run up, a good, a good cup of tea, and a. A good run up when you're doing this. Good. So just going back to those. So that these two are closer, so I can make that a little bit darker there. A bit of depth to that. And just keeping again, keeping your eye on these puddles with a dry brush and relax. <laughs> so I'll try and connect it now with, with the landscape and I'll just go back to this bit of land there and, and see if I can just redefine that a little bit. Just some quite random shapes, trying to sort of depict some trees and, and things there. It just just adds a bit of depth to the uh, to the landscape. And then I'm I'm painting it at, at low tide, so I think I said on the other video it was like an inland sea, but it, it is. It's right on the edge of the sea, and the, the seas, the tides coming in and out at various points through the day. So we can see. So that was like a purpley blue colour and then I've put some burnt sienna on the bottom there. And then there's an embankment there that when the tide's low. So if I make up the blue, the cobalt blue and the, the Payne's grey bit of crimson so 
So again, it's a different brush stroke. You're trying to get some dry brush effect with this one there. darker so that's more crimson there Just adding a little bit of extra depth to that landscape there. So now we're looking at the reflection of the legs. So that's mainly Payne's Grey actually there that I'm using. <laughs> 